GBN, we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones, and in the news, quick response team nabs alleged goat thief in St. Catherine. Members of the St. Catherine North quick response team have arrested one man in connection with the seizure of a motor vehicle transporting stolen goats. The incident occurred in the Angel Heights Zero Spanish Town, St. Catherine, on Monday, December 12. Reports are that at about 3.30 p.m., officers were on patrol when they signaled the driver of a vehicle to stop. Two men exited the vehicle, one of whom managed to escape. The vehicle was subsequently searched and five goats were found. The man left behind was arrested. His identity, however, has been withheld. Persons who may have had their goats stolen should contact the Spanish Town Police Station at 876-984-2305. Law enforcers are also warning the public to only purchase meat from legitimate vendors during the Yuletide season and to report any suspicious activity to 119 or the nearest police station. All kinds of security guard dies in Mandeville crash. All kinds of security employees have been plunged into mourning following the death of a colleague in a motor vehicle crash on Monday on Caledonia Road in Mandeville. Sources name the deceased as Randolph Parsley, otherwise called Randy. Reports suggest that shortly after 7 a.m., Parsley was driving a Toyota Corolla motor car owned by Arkai when he fell ill at the wheel, causing the vehicle to crash into a wall. Up to Monday evening, police were unable to confirm details. It was a somber mood at the Mandeville Ridge Hospital, where Arkai employees gathered on Monday morning as news spread about their colleagues passing. Carpenter shot and killed in St. Catherine. The St. Catherine North Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the murder for Carpenter in the division on Tuesday morning. The police have identified the deceased as Rayshon Stewart, 25, of Rockford, St. Andrew. Residents reportedly heard explosions about 6.30 a.m. along Friendship Road, Fraser's Content, St. Catherine. The police were summoned and upon their arrival, checks revealed that Stewart was shot in the head. No motive has been established in the murder of Stewart. Gun found in baby crib, man arrested. The St. James police have seized a handgun, along with a magazine containing 10.40 rounds of ammunition, on Gordon Crescent in Granville, St. James on Sunday. Reports from the local police are that about 10.38 p.m., a joint police military team was on patrol when a house was searched and the weapon found under clothing in a baby crib. A man was arrested in connection with the find. However, his name has been withheld pending charges. M16 ammo seized in St. James. Members of the Joint Anti-Gang Task Force seized 43 5.56mm rounds of ammunition, commonly used in military-grade M16 rifles, during a targeted raid on Buck Toll in Salt Spring, St. James on Monday. The raid was conducted at an abandoned premises in the area about 10 a.m. on Monday, where the ammunition was found, according to the police. No one is arrested in connection with the find. Jura in Vibes Cartel trial found guilty of bribery. The jury was accused of attempting to bribe the jury in the 2014 trial of Dancehall Artist Vibes Cartel has been found guilty. Livingston Kane was today found guilty of perverting the course of justice, contrary to common law, when he appeared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court. The convict is to be sentenced on March 2 next year. Reports are that on March 13, 2014, Kane, who was a jury in the murder trial, against a dancehall artist, offered $500,000 to the foreman to influence other jurors to return a verdict of not guilty. Neurosurgeon interdicted after allegedly punching colleague. A neurosurgeon in Western Jamaica has been interdicted from duty after he was arrested by police for reportedly assaulting a colleague doctor who is now said to be nursing wounds to his mouth. The alleged assault occurred on Sunday near midday at Falmouth General Public Hospital after the neurosurgeon was told by his colleague that he needed approval to perform a private operation in the hospital. There is an arrangement in some hospitals that under certain conditions, doctors who have their practice within or near the hospital are allowed to conduct private surgeries, but at a ratio of not more than one in every three, a source in the health sector said on Monday, adding that the issue brings into focus the use of public health facilities for private purposes. The doctor, who is now in interdiction, was seen preparing a patient for a private surgery and was told by his colleague that he needed to get approval in writing to perform the surgery, the source added. 
The source said that, after operating the neurosurgeon, the doctor walked out of the operating theater, but was approached by the neurosurgeon, who then reportedly punched him in his mouth. The blow left the doctor with a cut on his upper lip, which resulted in swelling. The matter was reported at Falmouth Police Station, and the neurosurgeon was subsequently arrested. The Western Regional Health Authority is said to be investigating the matter. Regulation 32 of the Public Service Regulation states that where criminal proceedings have been or about to be instituted against an officer, and where the Public Service Commission is of the opinion that the public interest requires that the officer should cease to perform the functions of his or her office, the Commission may recommend his or her interdiction from the performance of these functions. Additionally, the officer is permitted to receive a portion of the salary of his or her office as the Commission shall recommend to the Governor-General. Forgery charges against businessman Jeffrey Macedo dropped. Retired business executive and accountant Jeffrey Macedo, who on February 10 this year was charged alongside his wife, disbarred attorney Jennifer Macedo, as had the forgery charges against him dropped. This disclosure was made in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Monday. It was alleged that Macedo had, along with his wife, intended to defraud and created certain documentation to include a promissory note to a swindle businessman Lorison Stewart out of $65,000. This amount represented a loan that was made by Stewart with the understanding that the loan amount would have been secured by a property in which the Mercedes had an interest. It was alleged that the property was subsequently sold without any repayment to Stewart. However, Mercedes attorneys Peter Champagne KC and Nico Pagan questioned the actions of the police in seeking to charge their client with four counts of forgery and two counts of obtaining money by false pretenses. Champagne leveled every criticism against the police for not seeking the advice of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions before bringing any charges. He subsequently wrote to the office inviting a review of the case against Mercedo. As a result, the court was advised that the DPP, after a careful review of the matter, would not be pursuing the forgery charges against Mercedo. Jennifer Mercedo, who has been represented by Christopher Townsend, is to appear in court on January 24, 2023. Champagne indicated that on that date, he will be making submissions for the two remaining charges against Mercedo to be dismissed. Portland street people charged with indecent exposure. The Portland police are appealing to residents who have seen homeless people engage in indecent exposure on parish streets to come forward and provide statements. It is not enough, the lawmen have stressed, to simply provide video evidence. In the past, we have seen footage being circulated, it would seem, on the face of it good evidence, but without a person giving a statement that they were the recorder of the event, we cannot take action, said Superintendent of Police Lloyd Darby, who is in charge of Portland. He was providing an update during last Thursday's monthly meeting of the Municipal Corporation on a recent case of indecent exposure brought against two people who live on the streets. A man and a woman, Darby said, were arrested on November 18 and taken before the court. The police, Darby said, were able to build a case because they had set up surveillance and witnessed their illicit behavior. Jonah Leslie is still in custody and his next court date is January 10, whilst Belinda Harris was deemed fit to plea in her psychiatric evaluation and was charged $1,000 for indecent exposure. She's back on the streets. Mr. Leslie is reminded of the Tower Street Psychiatric Department, he said. He said since then, there have been reports that Harris has once again engaged in similar behavior. It is for this incident that lawmen are hoping individuals will come forward. That the police, health officials have expressed alarm about homeless individuals engaging in coitus on the parish streets. The health team is also concerned about many inappropriate sexual incidents involving our mentally ill persons who live on the street. Our mental health team for primary and secondary care collaborated with the police to have one of the offenders brought into custody and treatment was administered. We are aware that the problem is not resolved and so we we'll work towards rescheduling a date with the relevant stakeholders to plan and discuss the way forward, said the parish's medical officer for health, Dr. Sharon Lewis. Portland has long sought to find a way to cope with those who live on its streets. Various individuals and organizations routinely provide meals daily and some sporadically access medical care. However, in most cases, efforts to get them into a rehabilitation center for longer-term care have proved futile. Superintendent Darby 
has once again called for a long-term plan. We need a holistic approach to their circumstances, to their illnesses. It is not just the police and the police action. Because we are guided by what the law permits us to do, and we have to follow the processes, he appealed. I am willing and we are engaging in some of the talks with some partners to determine how we can have a better fix of the problem of those who need help to get the help so that we don't have occurrences of these incidents. He said one of the avenues to be pursued would mean convincing relatives of the homeless to take care of their mentally ill family members. Just as though they would have cared for them if they had a medical issue, they should care for them if they have a mental issue also, Darby said. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.